versus pseudoscience. Action! Let's say John wants to get ripped. Dude, that's gonna be me. Problem, John doesn't have the genetics for it. Aw oh, man, I suck. But then John learns of a supplement designed to boost your genetic powers. Yes, it, it activates the GD8 proteins at the molecular level to alter one's genetic makeup. Yeah, it worked on my cousin Vinny. He was like 98 pounds and now he's like 200 in pure muscle. Sold. So John decides to go for it. Over the course of six months, he spends $4,000 on his supplement. And the results will blow your mind. And how much they suck. Because John got nothing. Except for a trip to the hospital where John learned that the active ingredient in his supplement is snake venom and dryer lint. But whatever did John go wrong? You might ask. Did science fail him? No, science didn't fail him. Pseudoscience did. So what is the difference between science and pseudoscience? Glad you asked. Pseudoscience is information that sounds scientific, but lacks some of the key characteristics of science. So what are those characteristics of science? I'm so glad you asked. Number one, systematically empirical, which means that the evidence can be observed directly. A reduction in blood pressure can be observed. Magnetic chakra fields cannot. Second characteristic, science has testable claims. See, your engine's making a noise because your piston cracked. Your engine's making a noise because invisible trolls are having a party. You can test the fact that your piston is cracked, but you can't test the fact that trolls are having a party. Number three, claims are based on evidence. Number four, scientific claims are published in journals. And pseudoscience tends to be posted on blogs or the back of a label or a TV commercial. Do people even watch TV anymore? A YouTube ad. Another characteristic of science is that it is cautious hedged and uncertain. According to our detailed analysis, there may perhaps possibly be some sort of main effect in the presence of a possible interaction under such and such conditions, maybe. Sign me up, Doc. And finally, and perhaps most important, scientific research is replicated and replicable. To help you understand the difference, let's look at this fancy pantsy table. Science information is based on empiricism. Pseudoscience information is based on intuition, jargon, or expert opinion. Claims are testable. Claims cannot be tested. Claims are based on evidence. In pseudoscience, claims are based on anecdotes, jargon, or expert opinion. In science, claims are published in scientific journals, whereas in pseudoscience, they are published on product labels, blogs, YouTube videos, etc. Yeah, YouTube is the worst place to learn about science. Scratch that. Science claims are cautious and nuanced. Pseudoscience claims are definitive and broad. Science is boring. Yeah, really. You read something scientific, it's boring. Pseudoscience is exciting. Science is replicated. And pseudoscience is anecdotal. So how do you, fair viewer, figure out which is which? Well, you can start with the table, but it also requires a couple other things. Number one, be humble, which means you need to be ready to evaluate a claim. Don't dismiss it outright. And the honest truth is that scientists really suck at this. They often dismiss claims without even trying to evaluate them. For example, recently, there was a food scientist by the name of Brian Wansink, and it was discovered that Mr. Wansink, Dr. Wansink, had done some shady sort of research practices. And so a lot of the papers that he had published in the past that were super ridiculously famous were retracted. Now, it just so happens that one of Wansink's claims many years ago was that if you eat your meals on a smaller plate, you will eat less. Well, guess what, people? About five years ago, I was 40 pounds heavier than I am now. Check me out. You want to know how I lost that 40 pounds? Smaller plate. I owe my weight loss to a man who has questionable ethical practices. But I'm happy to be thin, y'all. I was reading a newspaper article and they mentioned this very study. And the author of the article said, don't bother eating on a smaller plate. We all know that everything that Wansink produced is junk. And the author of the article asked a scientist if he would ever evaluate this claim again. Guess what the scientist said? He said, everything Wansink does is junk. I ain't even gonna waste my time and my resources evaluating this crap. Wow, that's pretty arrogant of that guy to say, huh? He's not humble enough to even try to study it? That's what I mean by being humble. You need to be humble enough to actually evaluate a claim to see if it's true. In addition to this table, you might need some other tools. 
Second, we need to be skeptical, which means that we refuse to accept a claim without actually evaluating the evidence. And that means you have to evaluate both sides of the argument. Listen, you think eating vegan is the way to go? You think eating meat is immoral? Cool. Guess what? You'd better find some research articles that support eating meat. You have to intentionally expose yourself to opinions that are different than your own. Again, it takes humility, but it also takes some skepticism. Even being skeptical of claims that you hold dear. Number three, we need to evaluate the evidence. We need to weigh the strength of the evidence for both sides. And this class will teach you exactly how to evaluate the strength of evidence. Four, here's what we're looking for. We are looking for converging evidence across multiple studies. By the way, take the time to memorize that phrase because it's ridiculously important. Although to be honest, I'm gonna say that phrase so many times throughout these videos that you're gonna have it down. Converging evidence across multiple studies. In other words, one study ain't gonna do it. One study isn't proof. One study isn't even solid evidence. Unless it's like a massive study. You've got to have multiple studies. And finally, five, remain uncertain. Even in the face of overwhelming evidence, we still need to leave room to be uncertain. We need to be ready to accept that that claim might be wrong. Because guess what, before Einstein, everybody was certain Newton was right. Turns out Newton was wrong. So be humble, be skeptical, evaluate evidence, converging evidence across multiple studies, and remain uncertain. That's a lot to remember, isn't it? Just remember this helpful mnemonic. Scientific evaluation of claims most unusual. Be humble. Scientific. Be skeptical. Evaluation. Evaluate the evidence of claims, converging evidence across multiple studies, most unusual remain uncertain so let's evaluate some claims together everyone put on your humble and skeptical pants people then we will evaluate the evidence see the non-affiliate link in the description for this product i am not at all recommending that you should buy it <laughs> not at all <laughs> so let's read some of the statements Hair Essential uses a powerful combination of herbs that work to encourage normal DHT levels within the hair follicles. I am oozing with excitement, are you? Hair Essentials supplies and seeds your follicles, seeds them, oh! With the proper nutrients they need to stay healthy. These nutrients are quickly absorbed into the bloodstream where they nourish and maintain overall hair health. Oh boy! For healthier overall hair condition. Works for men and women. Effective for all hair types and doctor formulated. Well, by golly, if a doctor formulated it! Formulated by professional herbalists, our products combine the best of modern science and traditional wisdom with the purest of ingredients. Let me just get my credit card. 90 day money back guarantee. Sold! So let's evaluate. Science, is the information based on empiricism or intuition, jargon, or expert opinion? Pseudoscience. This is based on jargon and expert opinion primarily. Number two, are the claims testable or can they be tested? Well, the claims actually are testable. So in this regard, it's scientific. Are the claims based on evidence or are they based on anecdotes, jargon, and expert opinion? Well, they are based on anecdotes and jargon and expert opinion, pseudoscience. Claims are published in scientific journal or are the claims published on product labels, blogs, YouTube videos, etc.? This is a product label, so obviously. Are the claims cautious and nuanced or are the claims definitive and broad? Definitive and broad. Your hair will radiate with chakra love. Are the claims boring or exciting? I tell you what, I'm excited. Are the results replicated or are they anecdotal? Anecdotal. Now, this does not mean that the supplement doesn't actually help your hair. I have no idea, I haven't evaluated it. I don't know. We can try to go online and see if there are scientific journals that have published information about this supplement, but maybe that's an exercise I'll leave up to you, fair viewer. At this point, we don't have evidence to suggest that the evidence is strong. So at this point, we would look for converging evidence that it actually works. Let's look at another claim. Preoperative anxiety is prevalent in surgical patients who may require anxiety medications, thus impacting 
preoperative teaching and patient satisfaction. No studies were found in a comprehensive search on the effect of essential oils on anxiety in the preoperative setting. The purpose of this experimental study was to investigate whether the essential oil lavandin is more effective than standard care in reducing preoperative anxiety. A convenient sample of 150 adult patients were randomly assigned to either control standard care, experimental, standard care plus essential oil, or sham, standard care plus jojoba oil groups. Visual analog scales were used to assess anxiety on admission and or transfer. Controlling for baseline anxiety and pain, the Lavendin group had significantly lower anxiety and or transfer, suggesting that Lavendin is a simple, low-risk, cost-effective intervention with the potential to improve preoperative outcomes and increase patient satisfaction. We can check off the boring category, can't we? Let's evaluate this. Is it based on empiricism? Yes! They actually recruited people and they collected data. Are the claims testable? You bet they are, and they were actually tested in this study. Are the claims based on evidence? You betcha. Now you'll learn later that the evidence might be a little weak, but it's evidence nonetheless. Are the claims published in scientific journals? You betcha. Are the claims cautious and nuanced, or are they definitive and broad? Well, they're really not that cautious and nuanced, so I'll lower the points for that category on this one. Are the claims boring? Goodness, yes, they're boring. Are the results replicated? Nope. Neither are they anecdotal though, so kind of in the middle, I guess. So what do we conclude at this point? Not much, we keep looking, but we might tentatively conclude that there might be some evidence that this particular essential oil may reduce the risk of anxiety, perhaps possibly. See, y'all are learning to be scientists already. Let's do one more, shall we? This lifestyle has impacted my life in so many ways. After feeling so healthy and alive, I could never go back to animal products. The biggest benefit for me was the feeling that my clothes fit better than ever as well as clear, glowing skin. <laughs> With a healthy tone that I've never had before. My skin is no longer dull, it's smooth and improving every day. I don't have to wear as much makeup as I used to. I don't wear any makeup at all, dude. Energy has been another major plus because I am feeding my cells food that it can utilize as fuel. My body functions better than ever. Especially my digestion. Tell me more. After I drink my favorite smoothie, I swear I can feel the vitamins buzzing through my veins. I can feel the energy from my food. More energy means more exercise too. Strong is the new sexy. Oh, you bet it is. So let's evaluate this claim, shall we? Is the information based on empiricism? No, it is based on intuition, jargon, or opinion. Are the claims testable? Actually, they are. That's a lot of claims she's making, though. Are the claims based on evidence? Or are they based on anecdotes? This is an anecdote. Are these claims published in a scientific journal? No, they're published on the blog. Are the claims cautious and nuanced? No, they are definitive and broad. This will make your life better in every possible way. Skin, digestion, sex life. Why not throw test anxiety in there? Is it boring? No, it's exciting. Is the information replicated? No, it is anecdotal definitely strongly in the pseudoscience category. What do we conclude? We're not concluding anything at this point. This doesn't give us much evidence. If we want to find evidence, we'd have to go to the journals themselves. At this point, we know how to evaluate whether something is scientific or not. So now, let's answer the age-old question. Is psychology a science? Well, let's evaluate the discipline as a whole, shall we? Is information based on empiricism or expert opinion anecdotes and blah, 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 blah. It's based on empiricism. Are the claims testable? Not all claims, but a lot of them are. Does meditation improve test performance? Guess what? You can have people meditate, and then you can measure their test performance and compare it to a group that doesn't meditate. That's testable, people. Are the claims based on evidence? Or are they based on anecdotes, jargon, etc., etc.? Most often, psychology's claims are based on evidence. Are claims published in scientific journals? Or are they published on blogs and YouTube videos? Both, actually. Are claims published in scientific journals? Or are they published on product labels, blog, blah, 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 blah? Both. Are the claims cautious and nuanced? Or are they definitive and broad? Okay, so we get docked points for this one. We are definitely in the definitive and broad category, which is one of our weaknesses. Are our claims boring or exciting? Ugh, boring!
boring. Very boring, trust me. Is the research replicated? No, unfortunately. So is psychology a science? Well, we try to take a scientific approach. We are empirical, our claims are testable, we publish in scientific journals, but way too often we are seduced by our own claims. We forget to be skeptical, we forget to be humble, and the evidence that we offer is often very weak. And perhaps the worst of all is that we fail to even attempt to replicate our own findings. And that right there is the problem. One we only recently discovered. In 2015, there was a study published that attempted to replicate 100 studies in the top journals in psychology. And the results of that replication attempt were dismal. Dismal. Very few studies replicated. And at this point, honestly, we aren't sure what we can trust. Why? Because we forgot our favorite phrase. Converging evidence across multiple studies. For too long, we have relied on one study to provide a definitive answer to a question. Well, that ain't good, folks. That ain't enough. But fortunately, the landscape is changing. The education of future scientists like yourself is changing. Replication is becoming the new status quo. Our standards for what constitutes evidence are getting stronger. So welcome to today. You, my young Padawans, are the generation that will change things. I look forward to seeing it. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, what is pseudoscience? They are claims that sound scientific, but they are lacking one of the essential ingredients of science. What are the essential ingredients of science or the characteristics of science? Empirical, testable claims, evidence-based, published in journals, cautious, replicated. Number three, how do you evaluate a scientific claim? Remember our mnemonic? A scientific evaluation of claims most unusual. Or, humble, skeptical, evaluate the evidence. Converging evidence, uncertainty. And finally, psychology's strengths and weaknesses as a science. We are empirical, testable, evidence-based, and we publish in professional journals. But we are not cautious and we do not replicate. So with that, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.